Hey guys, it's early, it's cold, but I'm headed to the flea market, so it's going to be a great day. Come with me, let's see what we can find, and uh, maybe I'll find that one big piece today. Gold bar, silver bar, something. Alright, well it's been a few days, it's not quite the weekend, but we finally got everything drug in. Let's go through and see what we got this uh, past weekend at the flea market. First couple things, ended up getting two of them, just because well, you can't go wrong with wool, but these are kind of unique and that they're marked USMC. I did a little bit of research and the black stripe on there dates it in the mid 50's so they're kind of neat they don't smell bad I mean it smells like an old wool blanket but they'll clean up well won't have to do much with those put them right back out a ton of little things um, a lot of digging nothing was easy to find this weekend some cast iron bookends that are marked, USA and the end are marked. And they're getting my table dirty. Some Stanley block planes. A number four and a number five. This one's kind of unique. It's a uh, British made. They got wet a little bit, so I had to clean them up. And then we'll put a little bit of linseed oil on them and give them a protection so they don't rust in the, in the future or from storage. But that'll be a video you'll see. I'll go through and get them clean and uh, getting them protected for storage. I am not quite sure what this is. It's copper. So I'm not sure. I it almost to me looks like what they'd use at a graveyard and it would be implanted into the ground and you would be able to put things into it. I don't know. I gotta clean it up. We'll see if it's marked anywhere. If anybody out there, it's about a foot long, about three inches in diameter, threaded hole, and it appears to be solid copper. Anybody knows what it is? Drop it in the comments if you got any guesses. I don't even know how this got in the box, but a little bicycle will find some kind of use for it now that I own it. I have to find some kind of use for it. Big old gouge, big rough speed, sweet gouge, doing bowl making. I'll polish that up and get that edge sharpened. And uh, that'd be great for making dough bowls or spoons or big double two-handed gouge. They say it was a weekend for smalls. Uh, guys with a lot of small boxes have cleaned out estates recently. Uh, actually, it's the ones I like. I, I prefer smalls. They're easier to ship, the easier to sell, the less damage possibly. I've owned a lot of nylon Remingtons in the past, but this is a completely nylon uh, reel made by Walco, a Niolite. Seems to work all right. Wouldn't be nothing to corrode. It would last forever, as, as you can see. Um, that's going to go on the, uh, the list that we need to do a little more research, because like I say, I bought it on a whim. I had never seen one before. Lighters. Good weekend for lighters. That's something always to be on the lookout for. Not just any lighters. Don't just grab anything you find. But you're looking for the unique ones. Automatic movements. Uh, 
again in the future I've said in other videos that I am getting around to where we're going to do a video and I show you how to fix lighters that have been corroded up and the flints are all locked up and there's other videos out there and I'm not taking away from what they do and what they do fixes them just the same but if I don't have to remove the flint wheel I'm not going to uh, small uh, I think it's a painter or either leather workers knife hide uh, another one of those gotta look it up and see what what we're truly dealing with. This here, this one I truly am going to ask everybody out there if they've, I believe this to be a coffee grinder. It's either a coffee grinder, it may, may be a pepper grinder, a pepper mill. Um, I'm not sure. It is definitely a grinder of some material, but it's small, handheld, copper on the exterior. Looks like maybe wood, um, steel mechanism inside, little trap door that closes. But the, the whole grinding mechanism seems to be pretty elaborate. Kind of dented up, don't know if it's worth messing with. Unfortunately, it's not marked anywhere. I've been all over it. And haven't found any markings on it. But if I take a good look at that, if you see, if you know what exactly I'm dealing pepper, coffee, whatever it may be, I'm not sure what exactly that is. But if somebody out there knows, please share. USA made can be cleaned up it's a little rough but I'll take a little polish to it shine it up a little bit anything tobacchiana um, it's getting more and more desirable ashtrays lighters uh, other advertising not the big signs I haven't noticed an increase in the big signs uh, tobacco signs in value but that'll come with time as more and more of them get lost and get destroyed cobbler's hammer I just wanted it. I thought it was kind of neat. It's a smaller. And then there was another one. This one here. It's such a small hammerhead. I don't know why you need such a big claw on it. But again, don't know what it was intended for, but I'll put a handle on it, probably clean it up, treat it, and then it'll get sold. There's a market for them. I've seen them. I thought, well, maybe if somebody, they're all numbered, made by Jim. Mm. Uh, something else. Got to research. And it was a good day for the lighters. Zippo style, not necessarily a Zippo, but there was other makers. And that's what the flip tops are called. But this one's marked US. Another one. This one's kind of neat. It's marked for War II B 17 bomber. I'm not sure where it was made, but kind of got a unique look. And what I'll do with a lot of these common type lighters, um, little pistol type lighter. But what I'll do is I'll put these in a group lot uh, and sell them all for one money. Do a buy it now. There's an early permanent match. If you've never seen one of these. Your wick and fluid are in here. The wick is attached to here. Your flint's out here strike it, it lights, just acts like a match, shake it out just like you would a match and put it back in. So the next thing, 
cool 70's western fixed blade. Doesn't appear to have been carried much but laid under the seat of a vehicle somewhere. You see back here where it got wet. It's kind of rusty. I think I can clean it up some. Give it a polish. But it's kind of a shame the blade other than some light corrosion from from sitting doesn't appear to have ever been sharpened. Pakistani cheapo switchblade. Just uh, it was miscellaneous. It was there. This is the flea market where everything in bulk tends to get you a better price. So make you a pile, make you a pile, and uh, you get a better deal. This is early Buick advertising. Sometimes you gotta watch some of these small things. These would have been given out if you just stopped in that day. And this is actually a uh, Buick. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's out of Fairfax. Fairfax, I'm not sure. Virginia, maybe. Uh, but a Buick dealership. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, it would have been a sewing kit. There's a thimble in there, and there would have been a couple of little spool, spools of thread and a couple needles. Just a little emergency thing. It, but back when car dealerships would uh, give you something other than junk mail. case pocket knife. As you can see it's in pretty bad shape. Back spring's missing. But the blade's decent on it and believe it or not I'll sell these for parts. Uh, they, uh, there's guys out there that take the time to rebuild them. I don't think it's... I believe it's from the 40s. I believe. But uh, I'll have to check the numbers and the dots. And, and I'm sure somebody out there is screaming right now, no, no, no. But I'm not an expert on them. I like them and I collect a lot for myself. But there's part of a knife. Leather's rotted away on it. But replacing that leather is a pretty easy task. And I've got a ton of it laying around. And I can't read it. I believe it's a shray. So that'll probably be on a future video. Breaking this down, getting the nut out, getting the pommel off. Uh, we'll make a new, looks like the guard, the finger guard's kind of chipped up and broke. So we'll have to make a new one of those. But the blade's in decent shape. It's not, again, been ground on a rock and destroyed. So I believe I can save it, put a good edge on it, and make that a workable, usable knife again. But then look for that in the future. I wish I could figure out who made it, but I can't. Uh, voice recorders. Honestly, uh, you would be surprised at how many of these little pocket uh, voice recorders that I have sold through the years. I don't know what people use them for, but I pick them up and they sell. So, there's something else to throw on your your radar to be looking for. Don't get the cheap ones if they're rechargeable and have uh, internal batteries. Those are a little more desirable. Well that's pretty much everything that was in the bag. Uh, other than a pack of Zippo flints. These will go into my my reservoir of my reserve of them I should say. Uh, the only other thing I was able to find this weekend was this Electro Voice Model 664 microphone. I uh, got the stand, cord's pretty destroyed. Got a cool retro look to it. Uh, it looks like this other nut uh, bolt for this side is missing. It's in half of it's there. Uh, unfortunately, I have no way of testing it, so it's going to have to be sold at, you know, for parts for you to test because I don't have anything around right now. No PA systems or anything to plug that type of fitting into. But it had that the unique look. Be heavy and expensive to ship. Hopefully, I can just sell the mic by itself. Um, and it looked like set lighting, stage lighting, Smith Victor. Pick this up. It's new in box. I don't see any instructions and. In Unfortunately, I 
there is no bulb in it. So this, I thought about keeping it here for us to use, but I believe it'll just go right back out. Uh, somebody out there. I don't want to have to buy special bulbs and go through that hassle, so I'll just keep what I have and I think this will go back out. Be sold. Well, that's pretty much it for today's flea market finds. Did pretty good. Gotta be uh, blessed that with it being this cold we're still able to get out and find things. Folks are still uh, willing to fear the cold and stand out there and freeze for hours. This time of year I tend to pay a little more for things because there's no use haggling. So if you're out there at flea markets and stuff, be kind. It's tough standing out there and dragging all that stuff out there and it's a lot more work than it looks like. But this is, uh, this is it. Uh, if you see anything here you like, be sure to check out, check out our store on eBay. It's Grammy's Favorite Stuff. You can also contact us below. Send us a message.